I'm Hava and today we're exploring the Bronx Zoo. opened in 1899 and is now one of the most famous zoos in the world. The 265 acres here are home to over 10,000 animals across over 700 species. First of all, I want to tell you something really important about when you come to the Bronx Zoo. This should be a takeaway, but I'm going to tell you right up front that when you go to the map to navigate to the Bronx Zoo, it's important that you don't just type in Bronx Zoo, but it's so huge you actually want to select what entrance you want to enter from. I say this because this is actually my second visit to the Bronx Zoo. The first time I came with my aunt, my cousin, and my boyfriend, and when we mapped it, we ended up not at the main entrance, this is Southern Boulevard, and I specifically had to map it to Southern Boulevard today to get the main entrance. But if you don't care about the main entrance, then just get to the zoo. But it's 265 acres, like I said, so keep that in mind. Anyway, I was really impressed, so before we even start today, I can tell you this is an incredible experience for locals and tourists alike, so no matter who you are, keep watching. Becoming a member, I got a free t-shirt, and it's apparently the 50th anniversary of the birds at the Bronx Zoo, so I think I'm gonna do a little quick change and wear this shirt today. Last weekend I was at the Prospect Park Zoo and if you haven't seen that video, I basically saved a turtle whose leg had, I guess, been pulled off or eaten off or something because its bones were totally exposed. So seeing this turtle, I just can't help but look at its beautiful leg. And I will link that Prospect Park Zoo video for you. While we walk around the Africa Trail, I want to comment on how cool that Congo exhibit was and the fact that the coolest exhibits here at the Bronx Zoo are called star attractions, which means that you need to make sure that your ticket includes the star attractions or you'll play for them a la carte, which it can get kind of pricey. The Congo exhibit itself is like $7 per person if you don't have it included in your ticket. not what I pictured when I read the books and watched the show Arthur when I was growing up. Anybody else see that? Comment below, let me know. Such a childhood favorite for me. It's the perfect day for the zoo. The high today is 84, it's sunny, and surprisingly considering it's Saturday in September, it's just not that crowded. And even though you might be like, well, it's not really tourist season anymore, even though it's warm enough that people are definitely still coming. I think there's like no non-tourist season. But anyway, this is something that locals do too. I'm just surprised by how not crowded it is, but I'm happily surprised because it makes it an easier experience for me. <laughs>
I was really taken with the fact that those little guys who look like rodents are more closely related to elephants and manatees than rodents and rabbits. I just want to take a second to appreciate how well of a job the Bronx Zoo does of making even the pathways feel very immersive. You're very much part of it, still enjoying nature, even though if you look behind me, in front of me, I'm not seeing any exhibits right now, but I still feel like they've really built a wonderful atmosphere that doesn't break just because you're walking from one to the next. I'm gonna try to get to everything today, and I think I might. I'm making a serious effort anyway. <laughs> just gotta keep moving. Let's take a break from the Africa Trail to see some of Wild Asia. York's Northern Temperance Forest. I just wanted to take a second while I'm out here by myself to comment on how much I love that it's a zoo, even though most of the adults are here with children. They become kids themselves, even people who aren't here with kids, but they say stuff that they would never say if they were just by themselves or with other adults in other contexts, like, hmm, I wonder if it's moving or, oh, look, it's sleeping. I don't know. I just, I just think it's really fun that adults get curious and start acting like kids again. Bronx River will be transported to Asia. Here at the Bronx Zoo, we are the headquarters of the Wildlife Conservation Society, also known as WCS for short. We have scientists and eagle birds in the field who can keep us here home. Was incredible absolutely a highlight for me so far you just get to kind of sit back relax let a guide drive you around because the zoo is huge so prepare for a lot of walking and they just kind of drive you around you're sitting there seeing learning about lots of animals the breeze is running through but know that it is seasonal it's only from May to October so I think it's an absolute must to so make sure if you have any way of planning your trip within those months that you do because it's so worth it Ooh, let's see what we have here overheard a very interesting conversation we couldn't find the brown bears me nor any of the people around me and then this guy says to the person he's with why do they make a zoo and they make all these hiding places I mean it kind of defeats the purpose and I'm like well the purpose of the zoo is to save wildlife and to create habitats where these animals can survive and thrive and part of that means they need areas with shade some of these animals need to be able to hide it's not only for us to look at them it's just a great thing we can can do to learn more about animals and by paying for this entry and all that you know we're supporting the cause I just wanted to put that out there if you haven't thought about it like that or if you're that random guy that I overheard sometimes you've got to be shrewd to get the shot you want I'm kind of just going around and looking and when I see something cool and or I can see the mouse I take a little clip of it but people were saying that they're so small and tiny in here so I'm really excited to find them myself
magical. This is the butterfly bar. I love this so much. You have to do this when you come. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. Getting a membership to the zoos was definitely one of my better decisions. And getting this specific membership was great because all I have to do is like flash my card and then they're like, okay, go on in and I get to do everything for free. It's so awesome. And if you've seen my Central Park video or my Prospect Park video, both these will be linked. I went on the carousels there and I don't care that I'm 25 years old. I still think carousels are a lot of fun. And that's another reason why it's so worth it to get the membership is because once you're in the zoo, everything is free. It's, you could say it's included other than if you choose to buy something for food or the gift shop, of course. Time to pick a bug to ride. Ooh. A prey mantis. Yeah. All right. Put my bag on the ground. And uh, I'm going to switch to my phone because I don't want to have this on the carousel riding. We're moving. bodies are allowed out of the cage as long as they stay within the closed door room.
this right here is the sea lion exhibit and I Hello And I just want to take a second to let you know that there are a couple of other places to see sea lions around New York City If you're not planning to come to the zoo or at least this zoo you could go to the Prospect Park Zoo Which I put up there and they do feedings there But the really cool place to see sea lions in New York City is gonna actually be at the New York Aquarium Which is out at Coney Island. I'll link videos to all these different things down below So just kind of letting you know about that if you don't want to come up to the Bronx There are other ways to see sea lions in a cool way here at the city. They do sea lion feedings here as well I imagine it's similar to the Prospect Park feedings which I recorded and we'll have here on YouTube for you But the Bronx Zoo is just so big I could not worry about getting here at the right time time for the feeding. Same thing with the penguins. There are penguin feedings, but I couldn't figure that out. Honestly, I have not even found penguins yet. Now we are looking for the big bird area of the zoo because I'm repping this bird shirt and I talked to a zookeeper earlier and he was like, you should definitely see the birds. So we're looking for it. There are several different exhibits that showcase birds. So I'm trying to, ah, there it is, birds of prey. That seems like the one that makes the most sense to start in to kind of go on a logical path. Vultures don't even look real, they look like cartoons. Go ahead, take a look. my favorite animal list. I mean, they're so cute. This one's totally been interacting with me. And you the way they swim and they put the feathers and then just like, ah, they're just so lively and so much fun and so pretty. And I grew up eating puffin cereal, so it's a draw too. Call me crazy, but I swear this guy has become my friend. That's incredible. The 
seabird apiary is where you can find penguin feedings at 3.30 daily if you want to make it for that. I mean, I just say come and go everywhere you want, whatever path makes sense, but there's a sign that says this is where it is. Habitat is gorgeous. Wow, it's it's so beautiful. I think they're laughing at me. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. the dinosaur safari exhibit which is something temporary which it'll be gone in October unfortunately this video might come out after it's gone or so close to when it's going away that sorry anyway I have no idea what to expect I didn't really research this thing ahead of time I just remember when I looked up I was like oh this looks interesting let's go <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I caught it before the zoo closed then it's 4 30 already and the zoo closes at 5 30 so I am still going I have been here since 11. To give you perspective, this is my foot. I wear size six. They are a part of the dental pack because birds are modern day dinosaurs. So we wanted to kick you off with some modern day ones like these lovely Dalmatian pelicans. They all come from the theropod family. So when you check out creatures like the Tyrannosaurus rex, Velociraptors, and even the Allosaurus, they all evolved into the modern day dinosaurs that we have today. What? So you have the lovely checklist. If the legs are right under the hip bones, something that we actually have in common with them, that is probably an indication it's gonna be a bird slash dinosaur. They also lay eggs. So yes, that does mean the T-Rex would lay eggs. So that is something they also have in common. Having hollow bones or other skeletal similarities. So the big one is definitely those hollow bones because it helps each dinosaur in different ways. For the flying ones, it obviously helps them fly. And for the larger ones, it can help them grow to be the sizes that they are. Wow! Yep. Oh my gosh, thank you! No problem, enjoy your dino. I'm so thank you. in the gear for any facts or games, okay? Cool, thanks. No problem. Wow, this is so interesting. Did you know that birds are modern day dinosaurs? I'm very happy about coming on this temporary exhibit. Really cool. perspective but these guys are starting to scare me a little bit so we're gonna keep going those zookeeper here just told me that they were the biggest predators of their day or top predators
neat about this exhibit is the fact that of course they've made the different dinosaurs approximately the size that they suspect that they were and seeing how big some of them were and how different in size some of them were. Some of them weren't huge and also the sounds that they had them make. I wonder how realistic of a guess that is because they all just sound like they're moaning and groaning <laughs> as you might have heard. I think I'm heading towards the exit gate of this dinosaur exhibit and I have to admit it was actually pretty cool and the reason I admit that even though it doesn't you have no reason to suspect otherwise is because I honestly came into this kind of questioning how cool it was gonna be I thought maybe it would be cool like I said but then when it got started I was like oh this looks like it could be lame but it turned out to be really neat hi more dinosaurs never seen a black squirrel before. I just talked to a couple people who work here and even though it's, the zoo doesn't close until 5.30, at five o'clock they start putting the animals away. Really they start kind of taking them away from the display area so that people will actually start to leave, which I totally get that. We did almost everything except a few things and the main thing that I didn't get to, but honestly I'm not even sure if it was happening today, is the zoo shuttle, which it's a seasonal thing and it's only in select dates in August so I forgot to check today to see if that was one of the dates, but I really do think I'm gonna be back to the Bronx Zoo, maybe with my parents. So I'm just gonna make sure I do that then and I'll make sure I hit the other animals that I didn't see this time at that point. My top two favorite things on my immediate reflection, which I'm starting to realize with my videos, but I give you my immediate reflections and then sometimes later as I'm talking to family or friends, more comes out. But let me tell you, the things you cannot miss, do not miss the butterfly house, very magical experience. The Asian monorail, too cool. And I don't know if the butterfly exhibit is seasonal or not, I forgot to check but the Asia monorail is so definitely keep that in mind and then just in general this is a really cool zoo so even though I have been here since 11 o'clock a.m. it is five I have been here for six hours and I did almost everything so maybe if I had truly made it here at 10 a.m. when they opened today maybe I could have done everything but that's just to say I also tried to be intentional about keeping moving I mean I did slow down in some areas certainly taking photos and videos the way I am does slow the process down a little bit but I say this to let you know that this place is enormous it's huge if you really want to try to see the majority of it you're gonna want to get here in the morning and then block your day don't expect to do much else the day you come here especially because unless you happen to be staying in northern Manhattan or somewhere else within a close proximity to the Bronx Zoo you're also gonna be looking at quite a track what I'm saying is the Bronx Zoo is pretty far from most New York City attractions since it's in the northwestern part of the Bronx but it's well worth the commute of course it's worth the commute for what you just saw, incredible exhibits. And I wanna tell you, if you are looking at going to other places or you've been to other zoos and you're like, do I wanna spend my time in New York City going to the zoo? Of course that's a personal decision, but I will tell you, I have a surprising amount of experience at zoos. I've been to the Houston Zoo, which is where I grew up, the Smithsonian Zoo, which is in DC, the St. Louis Zoo, the San Diego Zoo, the Santa Barbara Zoo, Central Park Zoo, and now the Bronx Zoo. And I can tell you the Bronx Zoo, in my opinion, is only second to the San Diego Zoo, which you could spend two days they literally sell two-day passes to go there why is it only second to the San Diego Zoo there's so much to do it is just so incredibly well done and something neat about it is the fact that so many animals are bred here and then sent off to other zoos as part of animal conservation efforts may I have your attention please yes the time is now 5 15 and the zoo will be closing in 15 minutes please begin to make your way to the exit now I want to talk about the cost because this is not a cheap experience especially because I strongly recommend that you get access to all the star attractions. I think the premium experiences are worth it, which means that to get all of that in your ticket, at the time of this recording, the cost of an adult ticket with all of that access would be $42. Now I do wanna say, if you're planning to come more than once in a year, or you're planning to go to other zoos too, then it kind of brings down the cost in a way to just get an annual membership. But even if you don't, because you're just coming for one time on a trip, at the time of this recording, the cost of a ticket to One World Observatory is $43, which is almost the same. 
team. And you would spend an hour, maybe two, at that experience. But most people don't really bat an eye at going to pay for a ticket for that. So I'm just saying you're gonna spend all day here. So if you're thinking about how far is your money gonna go as it relates to the time of entertainment, you get it. Speaking of One World Observatory, if that's an experience that you think would be really cool, which it is the highest observation deck in New York City, in the United States, in the Western Hemisphere, then you can click up here to see that or click the link in the description below. And make sure you, before you do that, you go ahead and subscribe, turn on notifications, click the like button while you're at it, and follow me on Instagram, send me a DM, introducing yourself. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.